Hello, today is February 1st, 2020, and we are going to be kicking off our maple syrup um, season for 2020 here. And around me is basically what we're going to use. Um, we got our buckets, and um, we have our sap line, our pre-made um, lines that will actually, you know, drill the tree. This line is actually gonna go into one of these buckets and that's how we're gonna collect our sap. Now, these buckets I sourced from, um, it's actually a bakery, so everything's food grade. Um, you know, this line right here, it's just your basic, it's 5 sixteenths, or yes, 5 sixteenths. We uh, aren't tapping seven sixteenths any longer uh, outside of one um, tap that we'll be putting in, and that's on a clear bottle here. Um, the reason for that, I call we call it the tell tree. So it's gonna be a tree down at the end of the driveway. You can pan down the end of the driveway. Uh, we'll get a closer look at that as we go to tap trees, but it's gonna be down that way. Um, you know, before we go into the tapping, I just wanted to give you a quick rendition of, you know, how we make the uh, buckets, and it's pretty simple. Um, like I said, this line, it's 5 sixteenths, so we just grab a drill bit that, you know, we're going to drill a hole into the bucket to facilitate the line. Um, and it's real simple. When you drill into the side of the bucket, you want to be opposite side of the handle, all right? And when I had first drilled, I drilled in this first lip here and then found out once I put the lid on that the lid would go down and block off the hole. So little tackle tips, maybe just to save you time, aggravation, what have you. Uh, what we do is we just sit there and, you know, this, this handle goes this way and the reason you put the hole the opposite of the handle is when you go to pour, um, you could just flip the handle over this way and the sap is not gonna pour out of the hole that you drilled. So it's real simple. You go down to the second rung here and that's it, all right? You wanna clear your plastic filings away. Also, you'll get some plastic here I mean, a fingernail will make quick work of that. Um, you can also take your tubing and poke it through this way, and then poke it through this way, and it'll clear up that, uh, it'll clear that up. All right, so we got our, our hole the opposite. Well, I don't, I'm not gonna, you know, make $200 worth of, of syrup anytime soon. So I'm um, to invest that kind of money, but this is hot water heated up in the microwave. Just uh, put this in for a few seconds there and it just makes life way easier to put that spout on there. And you twist it and that's it. That's what we got. Um, doesn't matter which way, you know, once you put this into the bucket, it's going to find its own way. Um, and Grace and I, uh, we pre, we built these yesterday actually, um, for tapping today. So we got a lot of trees to tap. So as it comes to tapping, um, we use the five sixteenths. This is actually a bit specifically for tapping maple trees um, and real simple I mean they're more expensive than a regular drill bit from what I'm being told I've been doing this for 21 years now I've used a regular drill bit the whole time um, as I get older I guess I'm becoming more conscious of you know the, the, the health of the trees preserving nature uh, never thought it made a matter I'm being told that it does uh, so bought a specific maple tapping bit uh, and this is it and all we did here is we put a piece of tape I don't know if you can see that um, 
put a piece of tape there and it's right around an inch and three quarter um, just so when we're drilling the hole we I don't have a stopper or anything high tech like that so we're just gonna drill it in when we hit the tape we're gonna stop a couple things with this bucket we're gonna make a hole in it it's real simple but if you see these seams here you don't want to put your hole on the where the seams are from the plastic mold that made uh, this container you want to put them on the opposing sides and it's real simple what we do is you just take uh, a knife you want to put be towards the top of the of the container um, because you you know if this once the sap fills up but you just it's a real simple X all right that's it we're gonna load things up into cami which is the side by side over there and we're gonna tap some trees <laughs> Okay, now we're going to be tapping the tell. Um, again, I hate putting holes this big in the trees. Um, I'm going on an angle a little bit slightly. Some people tell you that, you know. And I did an in and out on that just because it's a regular drill bit. So, um, and it's a habit that I have. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna put this puppy in here. All right, we're gonna have to redo it. Uh, all right, it's gonna be our tell. Also, with these, you wanna boil them. That's kind of why it's pretty shiny there after each season. And then again, you push this straight on, and give it a little twist. Um, you know, it's not warm enough. It's, I want to say 35, 34 degrees right now, um, which is, it's one of the first warm ups that we've had of the season. Uh, and this is really early, it's February 1st. Um, I rarely tap trees this early, but this coming week um, where we're located, I looked at the weather for the next month and we're gonna get, between uh, Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow and um, next the, the following Sunday, that first week, we're gonna have good five good days of run. Um, so I kind of want to capture that. And then we're probably gonna have around 10 days where it gets really too cold to run. Um, and then it's gonna be full on. But this year seems a little iffy, questionable. I don't want to miss out on the sap. Um, I actually have a commitment for 120 gallons of sap to um, a local uh, brewery. Uh, they actually make uh, maple um, maple sap porter, um, which is delicious. Um, so I definitely got to fulfill that. And of course, we want to have maple syrup, right, Grace? Yes. All right. So. Um, so I don't, at this point, with the weather, the way it's been, um, I really don't want to take a chance on missing out on good five, six, potentially seven days of run. And this right here should start running, um, I would say within the next hour or two. So we're gonna get at it with these um, again, and we're gonna, we're gonna show you that as well. We're just gonna, you know, we're not gonna sit here and, and videotape 20 some odd buckets that we're putting up throughout, or maybe we will, I don't know. Um, but uh, we're gonna get after it. 
and uh, let's let's get going. Okay, so now we're tapping the buckets with the five sixteenths. Different technique, different bit. This is the um, bit for smaller holes. So. And again, what I've read, have seen, and all that good stuff, we uh, just want to go in and out and um, all that good stuff. So this tree, got some moss here. Kind of want to be on this side. There are so many different um, thoughts on tapping trees, where to tap trees. Um, people say tap them on the south facing side, um, all that good stuff. Uh, that's great if you're only tapping trees once um, because what I do, I'm tapping the same trees over and over again. Uh, hence, that's why I've converted to the smaller bit for less damage to the tree. You can't put your holes all on the same side of the tree at least that's my understanding of it this is how i do it i'm sure there's better ways um and all that good stuff but um i kind of limit myself so last year i tapped this tree on over here somewhere on this i think it's like right about here uh so i am actually tapping this is uh south uh side so um other thing you know, some people tell you, you know, chest high, that's where you should tap. Um, some people I see taps down on the ground. I kind of do it where it feels, you know, comfortable, um, where I don't have to put a bunch of line or, you know, not waste, but yeah, waste some extra line. So I go in between. Um, and my thought process is, is a couple things. One, we don't get the snow that we used to get, you know, years ago. Um, so, I mean, we still get a lot of snow. We got two foot, um, you know, 2019 to kick off the winter. But, you know, I think that was the thought process behind it is, you know, they, were, they would hang their buckets off the ground and all, or off the trees. And you wanted to make sure if there's like, you know, four foot of snow accumulation, you, you want to be up above it. So, hence, you know, why they tap so high. But neither here nor there this is how i do it you do it the way you want to i'm just you know figure i'm sharing slight angle and again i'm gonna go in and out and wow like that um that was actually pretty awesome it cleared the hole out this blade this is the first time i've used this bit that hole is crystal clear um all right you can cut that got it. so all right so here we got our nifty little system here we got the tap um like i said that, that hole is awesome so really pleased with that i'm gonna put it in here i got the rubber mallet because these are plastic and you can feel it bottom out right there that's bottomed out again it's not flowing it's a little cold got my line right here Grab my pocket. Bucket's got the uh, trusty lid on it. Uh, and it's real simple. You just pop this in the hole and it on the ground and any slack. Um, and it is cold like this, this, this will flow. This will, when it warms up, this tubing will kind of re relax a little bit more. Um, the other key is when you're putting this up, uh, you know, and again, you know, everybody does things differently. And this is just me, my take on it. Um, I had learned, you know, like I was saying, I don't put the hole in the top of the bucket. I put it in the side for rain, you know, melting snow, things of that nature. 
the other thing is when I put the line in, you kind of want this going on. So the water is going to naturally want to follow this line. So if you have kind of like a, like a dropping point where, you know, the water may shed onto the tree, come down, but it'll drop off. So it's not following into the bucket. If it does, it's not a big deal. If you look here, Grace, this hole is pretty tight where, where the, um, where the tubing goes into the bucket. <laughs> you can check that out. That is our tops that just dropped on the ground. So we're going to want to wipe them off and clean them up a little bit. Um, but as I was saying, there's very little variance. There's very little space for rain to get into that. Okay. Um, so that's why we do that. And off to the next. All right, um, so we're gonna finish up here. We've got another, I don't know, a dozen or so pails. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's our fi first video. Um, next one, uh, well, we're actually gonna probably be doing it later on today, um, is we're gonna fire up the evaporator. We're gonna do what you call a dry run, but it's not dry. You don't ever wanna run an evaporator dry. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it with water. It's a new evaporator. Um, it's WF Mason evaporator, custom made. Uh, this guy's based out of Maine, Bill, great guy. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that on our next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit sub the subscribe button because currently I believe we're at maybe two subscribers, myself and Gracie. Uh, uh, and uh, so again, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you.